One of the cool things you can do with your PLC is actually use a sequencer instruction to run through a preset pattern of outputs to control holiday lights or to control a model railroad or to do a number of different things. So let's take a look at how you can do that. Um, here we'll look at the PLC first. You can see I already have a sample program running and I'm just making the lights go back and forth and back and forth. So let me show you how I accomplished that. Okay, I'm going to stop by using the program from our last episode. Here we had the timer, which we we're using its accumulate value to change the outputs. So the first thing I'll change in this program is I'll change the timer from 50 uh, seconds to 100 milliseconds. The next thing I'll do is add a rung. Now I'll add an XIC. Um, I could just drag and drop it, but you know what? I'm going to double click and type it in. And I know my next instruction I want is SQO, so I'll just type that in as well and press enter. And for my XIC, I'll use the timer done bit. For my SQO, the array of the bits that will be applied to my outputs doesn't exist yet. I'll go ahead and create it. And I'll just call it my array. And I will, uh, I want it to be a dent, but I want it to be multiple dents. So I'll make it a array of 30 dents. And then I definitely want it as a controller scope tag, just personal preference. And so I'll create that tag. Next is the mask. I don't want to mask out any of the first 16 bits. And usually it's simpler to write the mask in a hex format. So I'll do 16 pound, which represents hex. And then I'll do FFFF. That way I don't mask out any of my 16 bits, my first 16 bits. The destination, where do I want to put the destination? Well, I would like it to go directly to the outputs, but I can't because the outputs are a integer. And the SQO wants to work with double integers. So I'll create a new and opposing tag and I'll call it my outputs. Okay, we'll create that. I just want to make sure it is in the controller scope. Okay. Well, it looks like I misspelled it, but we'll keep going. The control tag is the tag for the SQO instruction itself. So I'm just going to call that my SQO. And the length in my example is going to be 14, and you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so the last thing I need to do is take my output, an opposing output word, and move it to the actual physical outputs. So I'll change our move instruction, and I will change it to... M outputs. And I should be done. So the next thing I gotta do is I actually have to fill in my array with the bit pattern I want to apply to the outputs. So let's go ahead and open control the tags. We'll open my array and I'll start filling in the bit pattern. Now the first word in the array is not step one. Okay, so step one is gonna be the second word or word one. So we'll start off with uh, one and then I'll put a two and then four, and then eight. And this is gonna make the um, lights go from one side to another. 28, and then we'll come back down, 64, 32, 16, eight, four, two. And since I already have a one at the beginning, I'm not gonna put another one. And you can see here, when I finish, I have one through 14, which is why I said 14 steps. All right, I should be all done. So now I'm gonna save this program with a new name. We'll call it test. SQO, and we'll save it. And now I'm going to go Communications Who Active to make sure I download it to the correct PLC. Yes, that's the one I want to use. Let's go ahead and download it. And we'll go ahead and overwrite the program that's already in there. And in a moment, it'll be downloaded. And we'll put the PLC back in run mode. And we'll take a look at the PLC. And as you can see here now, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on. The light's going back and forth. And if we look in the program, we can see it's going through it pretty quick because we're doing it 10 times a second. And you can see the bit here on the outputs. Maybe we should slow it down. Let's slow it down so we can see that bit walk across here. And that's it. That's how you use an SQO instruction to walk through an array with a pattern of bits and apply those bits to your outputs. Perfect for controlling your holiday lights and many other uh, hobbies that you may want to take on. And that's it for this episode of the Automation Minute.